My name is James Daubert. I'm the director of the electrophysiology program at the Duke University Medical Center. I'd like to talk about uh, the role of implantable defibrillators in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. What should every patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy know about implantable cardioverter defibrillators? The key things that every patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy should know about implantable defibrillators are first, uh, what, is the, what is the point? What is the role of the defibrillator? Uh, we often run into the situation the patient may have some misconception that the defibrillator may help them feel better, lessen their symptoms on a daily basis of shortness of breath or chest pain, and unfortunately that's not the case. Now, there are exceptions uh, in cardiac resynchronization therapy, where biventricular pacing is used to treat congestive heart failure. The defibrillator, the, the resynchronization defibrillator, can improve patients' symptoms, but that really doesn't come into play in the vast majority of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So, the role of the defibrillator in a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patient is to prevent sudden death. It's to rescue them from the rare, unexpected, unpredictable occurrence of a life-threatening arrhythmia, specifically ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation. So that's the first thing that the patient needs to know about an implantable defibrillator. The second thing they need to know is that um, it uh, is there to help them. It's there to monitor their rhythm. It's, a, it's an insurance policy. It's uh, uh, there to rescue them from this dangerous rhythm. So they need to get comfortable that, that the defibrillator can help them and wrap their, their mind around, if you will, the possibility that there could be a shock from the defibrillator because that's how it's going to uh, execute its life-saving, potentially life-saving, um, action by shocking them out of this dangerous arrhythmia. So it's really a two-edged sword that the patient has to uh, understand about an implantable defibrillator, that there can be some discomfort, some pain associated with a shock, um, even if it's a transient uh, situation, just a, just a momentary um, sensation, uh, but that it could be life-saving. So I think that's really the other key thing that they need to know about a defibrillator. What is an ICD? So an implantable defibrillator, um, really we should talk about an implantable defibrillator system because it involves the generator um, and the lead or leads. So for the traditional defibrillator, the transvenous system, um, this includes the a defibrillator unit or generator or can, it's sometimes called, that's placed under the patient's collarbone in the front of the chest. And then that's connected to one or more leads, uh, wires, that go through a vein down into the heart. So this wire, um, there's one key wire that's in the right ventricle. And that wire is monitoring the patient's heart rhythm. It's sensing the signals um, for each heartbeat and counting the rate. Is it a normal rate? Is it regular, etc.? cetera? Um, it sends that information back to the defibrillator that processes it, and it's on the guard. It's watching what the rhythm is, and if it sees a sudden dangerous fast rhythm, let's say 200, 250 beats a minute of ventricular tachycardia or even ventricular fibrillation, then the defibrillator unit will charge up deliver a shock through the lead, and hopefully restore normal rhythm. So the defibrillator includes the generator and the lead with their uh, respective functions that are working together. What other factors might prompt the consideration of an ICD in HCM? A patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM, will get a defibrillator really for one of two reasons. The first is that they've had an episode of ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation um, or a cardiac arrest due to one of those rhythms. So we call that secondary prevention. They've already had one episode of the arrhythmia 
and we're trying to lessen their chance of dying from the potential next episode. The other scenario, probably more common, uh, that a patient with HCM would um, be considering a defibrillator, an ICD, would be what's called primary prevention. They're at risk for having a ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation, but they haven't had an episode, so they have risk factors for it. Because it's important that not every patient with HCM needs a defibrillator. Most are relatively low risk and don't need an ICD. Uh, but those who have one or more risk factors um, that are felt to be serious enough and place them at high enough risk for VT or VF uh, then may need to consider an ICD, a defibrillator, um, for prevention of sudden death. Are there different types of ICDs? There are several types of defibrillators. Um, first, there's we could break it down into transvenous and subcutaneous. Um, for historical reasons, there were epicardial lead systems, uh, but these have not been used in many years. So we're really talking about two broad types, transvenous or subcutaneous. The subcutaneous system is relatively new, available in the last several years. So let's focus on the transvenous system um, that makes up the great majority of defibrillators that, have, that are currently implanted in patients with HCM or, or other patients. Um, transvenous systems can be broken down further into single, dual, or three lead systems. A single lead system has just one lead in the right ventricle, and that lead is monitoring the rhythm, uh, watching for VT or VF, and delivering a shock from the defibrillator if necessary. Uh, a dual chamber or two lead system in addition, has a lead in the right atrium. That lead in the right atrium is sensing the atrial rhythm and perhaps pacing the atrium in the situation where the patient has bradycardia or a slow heart rate. So in that way, the dual chamber uh, defibrillator system can maintain atrial and ventricular synchrony, maintain the proper timing of the atrium and ventricle um, electrically firing and then contracting. And then lastly, the three-chamber uh, or three-lead system is also called a cardiac resynchronization device uh, that's sometimes abbreviated CRT for cardiac resynchronization therapy. This has, in addition to the right ventricular lead and the right atrial lead, also has a third lead placed over the left ventricle, usually via a vein in the heart called the coronary sinus. So that system comes into play for patients who have congestive heart failure, a low ejection fraction. So that's right away we know not the, the great majority of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy who have a preserved normal ejection fraction. So three types of transvenous uh, ICD systems. Let's go to the subcutaneous defibrillator system, uh, the relatively newer one. It again has a lead uh, and a generator. The generator sits, rather than sitting under the collarbone, it sits in the lateral left chest wall, the patient's left side, um, and uh, overlying the heart roughly in that area. Then the lead travels under the skin subcutaneously over to the breastbone in the front of the chest and then upwards along the uh, uh, breastbone, the sternum, again under the skin. So the entire system is in the subcutaneous or under the skin space. It's not inside the heart, it's not inside veins, it's not outside, touching the outside of the heart like an epicardial system. So that's the, the subcutaneous defibrillator system. And again, it's monitoring the heart rhythm, not from a lead directly touching the heart, but from a lead in the subcutaneous space that's sensing the heart signals. And again, sending that information back to the defibrillator where it can uh, monitor the rhythm and deliver a shock if necessary. Um, parenthetically, the shock needed to restore normal rhythm because the lead is not touching the heart is of higher energy than the transvenous system. So the defibrillator, the subcutaneous defibrillator, 
needs to be slightly larger than the transvenous system. When a serious heart rhythm problem occurs in a patient with an ICD, what does the ICD do? And will it always deliver a shock? So the defibrillator um, has two modes of action in treating a dangerous rhythm. Um, the primary one is a shock. So the scenario would be that the uh, patient with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy develops a rapid dangerous rhythm, ventricular fibrillation or very fast ventricular tachycardia. Um, the device will then charge up using its battery to provide the energy capacitors that transfer that uh, battery uh, potential energy into a high voltage charge and then deliver that shock through the lead to the heart or to the subcutaneous uh, lead in the case of the subcutaneous defibrillator. In some cases though, uh, the rhythm can be terminated with a painless uh, therapy. That's called anti-tachycardia pacing. Uh, we abbreviate it ATP. Um, and this can be used if the rhythm is organized, if it's regular, but still dangerous and rapid. So let's take, for example, a ventricular tachycardia, maybe about 200 beats per minute, uh, that's regular. Uh, we'll sometimes call that monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, meaning it's predictable, recurrent, the same pattern each beat. Uh, with that type of rhythm, they c it can often be broken, can often be stopped by pacing, by rapid pacing, a little bit faster than the rate of the arrhythmia, uh, for a few seconds and then stopping that pacing and oftentimes the rhythm, the ventricular tachycardia, will be broken back to normal rhythm and without needing a shock which, which would have been painful for the patient. So two types of ways of treating the rhythm, a shock or ATP, anti-tachycardia pacing.